Yeah. One of his biggest supporters is Rahim Kassam, who was a senior advisor for Nigel Farage at UKIP. He's been helping to raise money for Tommy Robinson in the United States and spoke to me from Washington earlier this morning. I asked him about the contempt allegation that Tommy Robinson was still facing. I, I've spoken to him uh, since he's been released, and I understand that actually I don't think that he will he will be, and he doesn't think that he will be uh, imprisoned for this uh, uh, alleged contempt of court rule. But he is somebody who has been convicted in the past for contempt of court mm. hearings in Canterbury, and in fact this was related to the Leeds case because he was given a further three months for breaching the suspended sentence handed to him in Canterbury. Yes, that's absolutely right. You know, this, this raises all sorts of questions, questions that the Law Commission itself has raised as to whether or not the freedom to report on such cases, and of course uh, a lot of people talking about other celebrity trials when it comes to the freedom to report on, on such things as well, whether that uh, is, is in conflict, is in direct conflict um, with uh, the freedom of the press, and especially uh, under the um, European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, and so at this point in time, you know, his lawyers will be building a case to say that actually this is an antediluvian uh, uh, law. This well, that may well be the case, and there are plenty of arguments around oh, yeah. contempt of court. Oh, yeah. But isn't that different from live streaming outside a jury trial, which under reporting restrictions could easily have derailed the trial? Well, you say easily. It, it actually takes quite a lot to impact a jury's decision. It takes quite a lot to impact a judge's decision. Uh, and when you watch well, that's the for the judge to decide, isn't it? Uh, and it was for the judge to decide last time, and look how the judgment went down. It wasn't a proper a judgment. And we well, know that, that was about the procedure of the case sure. rather than the substance of it. He's sure. still facing retrial on that, isn't he? But look, anybody can watch that video. It's still, it's still available. Anybody can see it online and see that actually what he did was he didn't point the finger at anyone and say, you're guilty, you're wrong, you're this, you're that. He was quoting from the Guardian newspaper while standing standing outside a courtroom. Well, if that makes someone guilty, then the Guardian editor should be uh, held in contempt as well. Well, as you know, it's a complicated business because it's a question of what reporting restrictions are actually applying during an active trial. How comfortable are you in supporting Tommy Robinson, given the kind of things that he's said about Muslims? What's he said about Muslims? Well, for example, after the 9-11 attack, he said, mm. every single Muslim watching this, on 7-7 you got away with killing and maiming British citizens. Mm. You had better understand that we have built a network from one end of the country to the other end, mm. and the Islamic community will feel the full force of the English Defence League mm. if we see any of our British citizens killed, maimed, or hurt on British soil ever again. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure what's contentious there. Here's what's the thing. contentious? It sounds like a threat to every single Muslim living in Britain. I think it sounds like a defence. He's distanced himself he said, from the... He said that the Islamic community will feel the full force of the English Defence League. But what was the full force of the English Defence League when well, he was Well, I imagine if you're a Muslim person protests? listening to that, you would wonder what it is. I mean, this well, is I, was, I was still a practising Muslim back then, and I didn't feel threatened by that. You see, here's the thing. There are, there are significant numbers inside Muslim communities in the United Kingdom that support Sharia, that support female genital mutilation, that, that, that will not report terrorists in their midst. But there is also a significant portion within Muslim communities all across the country who want this extremism rooted out from within their midst. Around but the country, you have to look at his to past record. He says Islam is fascist and it's violence and we've had enough. Islam, as in, as in political Islam, is what he's talking about, is a fascistic totalitarian ideology. Uh, and I grew up well, with Well, you it. know, the vast majority of the Muslim community in this country ah, would maintain that they live peaceful the lives you're not making and the would distinction argue between that Muslims they're not and Islam. violent. They're not violent, but you're not making the distinction between Islam and Muslims. The same way you wouldn't hold every Christian to account for what's in the Bible. You have to do the same with Islam and draw a distinction between ordinary Muslims who are hard-working, productive members of our country versus what the Quran teaches. But, and but it's these, these views, these extreme views are being voiced by a man who has a criminal record. He's been convicted of threatening behaviour during a fight between rival football fans, uh, common assault for headbutting a man on an EDL march, and uh, other convictions from fraud and so yes. on. I mean, Why are you, are you supporting are you, a man with a record like that? Are, are you saying that you don't believe that people can change? I mean, that, that's, that's the contention here. The contention is that a man cannot grow up, firstly, grow up not with a, a background like you or I, with a good education, who hangs out in Westminster. This is a, a working-class guy from Luton who saw a, an injustice in his community. Do you plan to use this case to build support for the far right across Europe? We hear about Steve Bannon's plans for the movement. This is the BBC all over, the far right. There's nothing far right about us. You know, I'm, I'm a Muslim immigrant background chap from, from Uxbridge in West London. Steve is a Virginia Democrat. He was a Kennedy Democrat. We have no truck with ethnic politics. We have no truck with racialist politics. 
So we, we don't touch that stuff at all. It's not in our milieu. What we're going to do over the next couple of months, and people are going to see it, is we are going to build a legitimate, uh, a serious organization that is doing things legally and above board that will help unite what we think of as patriotic, populist, nationalist parties around the continent, and we're not going to do anything untoward except take the rhetorical fight to the extreme left. Is the fact that you're building this new movement, is that an acceptance that UKIP is a spent force in this country? I don't think UKIP's a spent force. What I do think is the party has a competency problem. It has a competency problem because it has a fundraising problem. It has a fundraising problem because it doesn't have uh, a leader who has name recognition. Now, Gerard, I think, is doing a fine job, uh, but I would urge publicly, uh, Nigel Farage to get back into the fold and lead UKIP once again and help us get the Brexit. Absolutely. How many times would that make it? Well, it could be 16 or 17 for all I care. If it needs to get done, it needs to get done. Rahim Kassam, many thanks indeed for talking to us. Thank you.